Hi guys, Jamie Humphries here, and today's quick riff, we are looking at Knuckle Bones by Dave Lee Roth, as performed and recorded by the legendary Steve Vai. <laughs> Okay, so today we are taking a look at Knuckle Bones, the opening track on the original version of the 1988 Dave Lee Roth release, Skyscraper. Now, Steve I needs no long introductions. Starting out as a Joe Satriani student and then studying at the Berklee College of Music where he began transcribing legendary parts by Frank Zappa, who eventually enlisted him as a transcriber, which led to him joining the band as a guitar player. Now, Steve I has gone on to have an incredibly successful solo career. He was an architect for modern rock guitar and instrumental guitar, releasing such groundbreaking albums as Flexible and Passion and Warfare. His career has led him to work with a diverse selection of artists, from Frank Zappa to Alcatraz, Dave Lee Roth, Whitesnake, and even Ozzy Osbourne. Now, in this lesson, we're focusing in on the period that Steve I performed with Dave Lee Roth. Now, he joined Roth's band in 1985 and released Eat Em In Smile, the first album in 1986, and then followed up with the incredibly successful Skyscraper album in 1988. The guitar parts for Skyscraper were actually recorded in Vi's studio, his home studio, Stuco Blue. I think it's Stuco or Stucco. I always uh, never know how to pronounce that, but we'll we say Stuco Blue. So he recorded all of the guitars himself, and he is written as a co-producer and engineer, as well as guitar player and composer on this album. Now, there was quite an evolution of equipment as well for the recording of Skyscraper. According to his guitarist Extravaganza book, that first album, Eat em and Smile, that he recorded with Roth was a mixture of his performance guitars. He was also using the... Uh, the carving amplifiers and it introduced some martial amplifiers but it states in that book that when it came to the skyscraper album he was using the modified jose modified marshals and he was into the world of the Bradshaw switching system. So he was using a lot more effects within his tone. Now for effects, Steve was still using his old Roland delays, but he was also using the Eventide harmonizer. You can hear that a lot on Skyscraper, as well as Slip of the Tongue, and also on his groundbreaking solo album, Passion and Warfare. For guitars, this was the start of the gem guitar. There had been some early versions of the gem guitar, and he actually used an early version version quite a lot on Skyscraper, which was the Tom Anderson designed gem. But also at this point, he starts to introduce his Ibanez gems, although the Tom Anderson really does feature quite heavily on Skyscraper. Now, I was an absolutely massive Steve Vai fan. Uh, I first discovered Steve Vai when I saw the movie Crossroads. I'd read about him in magazines, but I'd never heard him. But I saw that movie and saw his, uh, his appearance as Jack Butler, and that was it. I was hooked. At that time, I also 
had made uh, a, a new guitar buddy who was really into Steve Vai. He introduced me to a lot of the Zappa stuff and flexible, flexible leftovers. And then ultimately I got into the Dave Lee Roth stuff. And it was the Dave Lee Roth stuff that had a massive impact on me with my guitar playing and my choice of, uh, of tones and how I wrote music. And I spent many hours trying to work out many of the licks and riffs heard on those two albums. Now, I was lucky enough to go and see Steve Vai perform with Dave Lee Roth twice on the Skyscraper tour. I must have been about 17 years old and I got to meet him. And uh, I got a, uh, a signature on my program. I've even got the ticket stub still in the concert program. But uh, at that time, there was a lot of hysteria around Steve Vai and I got pushed to one side by a security guard and smudged my signature. And it was a few years ago that I actually got to go and see Steve Vai. I was invited along by Dave Wiener to go and see Steve Vai perform here in Stockholm for the anniversary anniversary tour of Passion and Warfare and I was invited to sit with the friends and family and watch the concert and uh, I took my whole concert program along with me and said to Steve you know would you sign it again for me and he, he opened the concert program and everyone was looking at the ticket stubs it was really cool he was flicking through he hadn't seen one for a long time and then he re-signed it for me Steve Vai again. Now as I mentioned in another video I used to have a Steve Vai floral gem which I foolishly sold which I'm still trying to find or locate another one. Uh, for today's lesson, I'm using my newly resurrected 1988 Ibanez 540 Power, 540P. And this guitar I modified, it has, uh, originally it had a neck single coil, but I had a, another humbucker fitted. Uh, so it matched my gem. And these are original 1989 uh, Damasio Path Pros. I'm running into my Mesa Badland ahead. I'm using one of the onboard 4x12 impulse responses outputting from the built-in Caplone IR. And I'm also using the Eventide plugin in my UAD for some detune. Okay, so let's kick things off by taking a look at the first part of the riff. We're going to be playing a C minor seventh chord. I've isolated these guitar parts and I am 99.9%. .9%. Well, I'm I'm actually 100% sure that these parts are absolutely spot on. And uh, I've also watched some footage on YouTube from the Skyscraper Tour to get some ideas of the positions of Steve's hands, although it's not very clear, the the, the video itself, it's, it's really clear for you to see exactly where his hands are. So we start off by sliding from the sixth fret of the low E string. We slide up by a whole tone. I'm fretting that with my second finger. <laughs> Then we play a C minor seventh chord, and we're barring with our third finger on the D, G, and B strings on the eighth fret, and also playing the eighth fret of the low E. And you're sort of bouncing between the muted C root note on the low E and that chord on the D, G, and B strings, that triad shape on those uh, three middle strings. So let's have a listen. So you slide in, play the chord, then a mute, and then the chord again. And then we play another muted root note. And then we strike the chord and slide up a whole tone from the eighth fret up to the tenth fret, D, G, and B. So once we slide up, we then uh, we then play that chord. And then we re-strike and slide back down. And then we re-strike it. So put those that section together slowly. Okay, for the next part of the riff, we slide up from the sixth fret to the eighth fret on the low E and play the C minor seventh chord, that little chord figure again. We have another mute, and then we slide up from the 10th fret to the 11th fret on the D, G, and B, and then back down to the 10th fret. There's a semitone, little semitone slide there on the D, G, and B. So that's 10 up to 11 and back down to 10. So let's put that together slowly. Okay, then we repeat that whole figure. We finish off with a, a pick scrape, which then takes us into the rest of the introduction where the full band enters. And we just repeat that riff. Okay. 
Okay, then we're into the verse riff, and for this we're playing between 10 on the A and the D strings and 8 on the A and the D. We're going... <laughs> So that's uh, a 10 on the A and D, down to eight, back up to 10, and then strike that again, back down to eight, back up to 10. And then we play a muted eight on the A string, and then we play 10 on the D and the G, and eight on the D and the G. So play that slowly. Then we repeat that. And then we just simply drop that riff down a whole tone. So we're playing eight on the A and the D down to six on the A and the D. We're playing that muted six on the A string and then we play eight on the D and the G down to six on the D and the G. Okay, let's put those two riffs together nice and slowly. Onto the next chord, this is a G sharp minor seven add 11, or you could look at it as a B sus two with the G sharp in the root. You're playing four on the low E, four on the D and four on the G, and then barring with your first finger to play two on the top two strings, and you get this. So we play the E string, the D, the G, then the E, B, G, and then the B. Okay, so let's play that. We start off with some palm muting. And then the top notes, we allow those to ring out. And then we have this chord that uh, we're moving up from a G sharp minor seven, so that's just four on the E, four on the D and the G, and we move that up a whole tone to a B flat minor seven. So you get this. So there we're at the sixth fret E, sixth fret D, and sixth fret G. And then we just repeat that riff. So let's play that riff round one more time. Here we go. Okay, so now let's take a look at the pre-chorus section. This is a really interesting section here. We're playing like an F minor seventh chord, but we're arpeggiating it. We get this. So we're playing eight on the A string to 10 on the D, eight on the G, nine on the B, and back to eight on the G. Now this was the surprise, this next part, I was not expecting to hear the note that I heard, uh, heard jump out. You're actually playing a B flat dominant seventh. So you play uh, 11 on the A, 13 on the D, and then 11 on the G. And then we're up to 13 on the B, and then back to 11 on the G. So you get this. That was a real surprise to hear that note. Uh, once I'd isolated it, it really, really jumped out. And then we're sliding up from th uh, 11 up to 13 on the A string, and we're playing an A flat chord on the D, G, and B strings at the 13th fret. So it's it's almost like a, um, a B flat 11, because then you've moved that A flat uh, chord up to a B flat chord. So you're just shifting up from the 13th fret on the D, G, and B to the 15th fret. So you get this. <laughs> and you're jumping again you're playing that uh, palm mute on that root note that b flat root note <laughs> And we're back to our F minor seventh little arpeggio. 
And this time we have a slightly different arpeggio. We still play that A flat chord. With that dominant seven, but we don't play that that flat seven note until we 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 descend. So we're basically playing eleven on the A string, thirteen on the D, thirteen on the G, thirteen on the B, and then we play that eleven on the G. So it's slightly different that time. So put the two sections together. But that note is 100% there. For those of you questioning it, it really, really jumps out when you isolate it. So then we're on to this climbing riff, which also took me by surprise because originally I just thought it was single notes. But in fact, we're playing this. So you're starting off on this uh, F chord. You're playing an A note on the uh, fifth fret of the E, and then you're playing the F note on the uh, eighth fret of the A. So it's an inversion, it's an F over A. And then you just move your first finger up a semitone to play B flat five. And then we do the same thing here. So that's a G chord, you're playing that B note on the seventh fret of the E and you're playing the 10th fret of the A. So it's an inversion, it's a G over B. And then you move that first finger up a semitone to play the C5 power chord. So put those two together. So then we just drop that same riff down onto the D and the G strings, play it in the same position. So here we're playing a B flat over D. So that's the fifth fret of the A and the eighth fret D. Move that first finger up to play an E flat five power chord, six on the A and eight on the D. And then we move up to a C over E, which is the seventh fret of the A string. And we're playing the 10th fret of the D string. And then just move the first finger up a semitone to give us the chord of F5. So we put that whole section together. And that leads us back into the main riff that we heard in the introduction. So now we're into the chorus. And as I said, that's using the same riff as the introduction. It has a couple of little different fills in there. <laughs> Very cool little uh, dive bomb there. After that semitone slide between the uh, the 10th fret and the 11th fret and 10th fret of the D, a G and B. Just drop that, uh, strike that E string and just drop the bar down. Then we're back into the riff. Then we have this little C minor pentatonic lick. And you're playing the eighth fret of the G string, and we're pulling that. Pull that by a tone by pulling it down. Then 10 to 8 on the D. And then you're sliding a very quick slide from 10 down to 8 on the A, 6 on the A, 8 to 6, and then back up to 8 on the E string. Okay, so let's put all of these riffs together now and play through the entire part, the entire riff of uh, knuckle bones so you can play along. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so there you have it, Knuckle Bones. Such a fantastic riff. One of my favorite riffs off of Skyscraper. And it's really cool to be able to dig back and take a look at this part. It's just got some genius moments in it. So that's it for me for this lesson. As always, follow the link in the description where you can download the free Tab and Guitar Pro file for this lesson. And also, you know, if there's any riffs that you want me to cover, any quick riffs you want me to look at, please put them in the comments. And if you don't already, please subscribe to the channel. Okay, that's it from me. I look forward to seeing you here very soon for more lessons. Bye for now.